Good day. I'm John Curran, President and CEO of Aaron, and I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to talk about why to enter an Aaron Legacy Resource Agreement for your legacy resources. Um, people are probably aware of Aaron, but I'll just to highlight, Aaron is one of five regional internet registries in the RIR, the Regional Internet Registry System. Um, Aaron's formation is interesting. So when the internet got going, the administration of IP addresses was done under contract by the US government. And this happened for many, many years. Um, at times it got so busy that in fact, uh, the delegation of IP addresses to uh, businesses and internet service providers, uh, they actually broke up into, uh, delegated down into pieces. So for example, uh, in Europe in 1992, there was an organization, the predecessor of RIPE, which was the organization that uh, began handling address administration for uh, Europe. Same thing in Asia Pacific with APNIC. Both of these were done uh, below the government contract. Uh, this was all being operated by the US government uh, under a contract to administer domain names and IP addresses. Um, the US government actually realized it needed to get out of the game of administering IP addresses and that this should be done by the industry. And so uh, in 1997, uh, the internet providers in North America got together and formed a uh, not-for-profit called the American Registry for Internet Numbers. And we are a not-for-profit formed by the community. And the US government turned over the administration of the IP address space to Aaron uh, from its previous government contracting mode. And so Aaron uh, took the databases and the personnel and began operation. At that time, there was only three regional registries, Aaron, RIPE, and APNIC. Aaron's region was the rest of the world. Everything not APNIC and RIPE was done by Aaron. So that included uh, South America, and that included Africa, and all the other remote places like Antarctica and, and uh, space. So over time, uh, the community in the LACNIC region got together. And in fact, we recognized a separate RIR for them, LACNIC in 2002. And then the community in Africa got together and, and we recognized a, a regional internet registry for them in 2005, AFRINIC. And that's how we got the five regional internet registries. Now, uh, as I said, we're we were founded in December of 97. We're a membership organization, so the ISPs, uh, come together. They set our uh, they set our rules for administering address space through our policy process. They decide. Uh, they elect our board, which decides on the um, how we operate and is responsible for oversight of our services and our fees. And so, Aaron really is your regional internet registry if you have address space uh, that you got. Uh, from the uh, from the formation of the internet, uh, the U.S. government intentionally turned the responsibility over to Aaron. Now, as it turns out, we provide internet registry services to everyone, and that includes organizations that had address space prior to Aaron's formation. What's called legacy customers, uh, organizations that received address space prior to Aaron's formation, we provide them the same services they had when Aaron was formed. And as the US government didn't charge them, Aaron doesn't charge them. So we have uh, thousands of organizations that have address space that receive services for free for Aaron. But over time, our community has asked us to develop more services, more advanced services. This includes things like uh, authenticated internet routing registry and RPKI, resource public key infrastructure. These provide uh, security services that help tighten the and secure the routing of the internet. These services were developed by our community. They specified what services and they paid fees. All of our Aaron members pay fees that fund the development and operation of these services. Um, we do not provide these enhanced services to our legacy customers because our legacy customers have no contract and pay no fees. Um, but we've always offered a way for legacy customers to come in and get those services. By entering into a legacy resource agreement, an, L an LRSA, they get access to all the services that all of our customers get. Uh, the legacy resource agreement and the RSA, the registration services agreement, are the same agreement. So everyone gets the same treatment if they want to sign an agreement and pay the fees. Uh, 
Now, it's not quite the same because we actually have price incentives for legacy customers. While legacy customers are assessed the same fees as other customers, we actually have been capping their fees at a very low number. Let me talk a little more about that later. So if you have resources that aren't under agreement and you want access to Aaron's services, then you want to get it under an agreement. You want to get them under a registration agreement to get access to those services. There's a couple of advantages. One is you'll have a contract that says what rights you have to the address block and that you actually are entitled to Aaron services. Right now, you probably have very little in writing that says you have uh, particular resources and you have no contract that says the services we're providing you, you'll continue to get. So this actually helps uh, straighten out the foundation that many organizations rely on for their business. And so it can help uh, prevent confusion. Um, we actually validate to make sure the people who enter in a legacy resource agreement are the parties or their legal successors entitled to do so. The ones actually we've confirmed according to the records, which we have all the way back, to make sure the right parties are associated with the right number of resources. Now, if you're a government entity entering into a legacy resource agreement can uh, take a little extra time because government entities often have provisions regarding um, venue and uh, indemnification that need to be tuned to that entity. Aaron has a standard process for that. We, uh, you can contact us and tell us the legal requirements that you have to meet, and we will tune a legacy agreement for you. So you can go to the Aaron website. Uh, we have information available for government entities on how a government entity can enter into an agreement with Aaron and will amend the agreement to make sure your government entity, if you're a state, federal government, tribal entity, how you can do that and be compliant with the law provisions that you need to comply with. Now, the most recent change to uh, Aaron agreements is pretty important. We, we, when we established the Aaron agreements, it wasn't quite clear what provisions we needed to have to protect the organization and the customers who have address space. And so we had very broad provisions in the uh, early agreements. Most recently, uh, one of those broad provisions, Section 7, uh, a section that had people disclaiming quite a bit about IP address space, <clears throat> has been changed from a disclaimer of many provisions, which uh, in many cases was problematic for organizations, legal departments, and change to a positive statement that just says the rights that you get on your IP address space per this agreement are the ones stated in this agreement. So we've uh, made it a little easier. A lot of legal departments didn't like the provisions that had them disclaiming rights. Instead, we have a positive statement that says what rights this agreement provides, and the rest is left unstated. Something else I mentioned is that We've been capping fees uh, for legacy customers. Customers who enter into a legacy resource agreement have their fees capped. It was $150, $150 a year, uh, going up to $175 a year, and it can continue to increase $25 per year under this agreement. So if you sign an agreement and normally uh, for that amount of address space, you would be paying Aaron $2,000 or $4,000 a year, you see that on your invoice, but you see a cap because you're a legacy customer. You had your address space before Aaron was formed. And we have, uh, for the last 20 years, uh, been providing a fee cap, uh, a positive way uh, to uh, uh, limit the fees that you have to pay. So in fact, that uh, fee cap uh, is something we're not gonna continue to offer to legacy customers. They will pay the same as everyone else if they enter the agreement after January 1st, 2024. We've been offering that, that fee cap and the legacy contract, I guess now uh, to be clear, for about uh, 15 years. And uh, organizations that want to take advantage and participate in Aaron have come in and uh, entered into an LRSA. We're going to continue to offer it through 2023 for organizations that wish to come in. But our members have said they want everyone to pay the same fees. And while we've offered a benefit to legacy resource holders of a fee cap over all these years, and the ones who have entered the agreement will continue to have that fee cap uh, going forward, new parties that come in and enter a legacy agreement after 2023 will not have a fee cap. They'll say pay the same fees as everyone else. So uh, if you are going to enter into a legacy resource agreement, we recommend you look at that uh, as an aggressive priority for 2023. 
that actually concludes my presentation. I hope this explains uh, what the Aaron uh, Registration of Services Agreement is, how it applies to legacy resource holders, and why legacy resource holders might want to consider entering into such agreement this year. Thank you.